Welcome back to a very special Five on Five. We're going to hear with Merv George, the forest supervisor, Rogue River Siskiyou National Forest. We started this interview yesterday. I had so many questions. He was gracious enough to stick around and let us do it again. Thanks for staying. My pleasure. Appreciate it. So how much authority do you personally have when managing wildfires in the Rogue River Siskiyou National Forest? So as the agency administrator, I'm completely in control of the entire two million acres that we have on our forest. Okay. So when we get a fire, based on the time of the year, based on resource availability, based on what kind of threats it has. I definitely have the latitude to take multiple actions on what to do with that fire. Okay. So that completely within my authority. Okay, um, do you know if we have, if you have the same number of tankers this fire season as you did last fire season? So the air tankers are a national resource. They're not something that we house or have a lot of control over at the local level but I don't know the exact numbers as we sit here today of the number of aircraft that are available. Okay. I haven't heard um, anything to the contrary, so I'm gonna assume that we have at least had what we had last year. Okay, and what about personnel, do you know that? So personnel, as we speak, we're trying to get more people hired so that we can have full staffs and be ready for this year's fire season. So we don't have a firm number of personnel yet because we're still hiring. Okay, um, yesterday, and, and I think it was part one of the 5 on 5, you talked about a fire in the Calmeopsis uh, mm -hmm. area that, that kind of uh, informed you with, or perhaps in how to manage wildfires. How much goes into it, topography, location to, to cities, you know, when it, when it comes to how you decide to attack a certain fire? Well, that's a great question. So it comes down to a lot of things. Previous fire history, time of the year, resource availability. You know, one of the things about living in an area that's beautiful like ours we have more trees than people. And that's one of the main reasons we choose to live here. Mm -hmm. But the problem with that is when the rest of the country gets on fire at the same time as ours, the resources go primarily to other places if there's a competition for resources, especially if there's more homes and people. So that changes the way you have to look at these fires. And for me, having a, a lightning strike early in the summer months, I'm gonna be aggressive about getting those fires out as quickly as I can, because if I wait and I manage that fire for resource benefit and then it gets later in the year, say uh, September or October, if Portland catches on fire at the same time, when I need those resources to put that fire out, I may not get them. Mm. So the competition for resources is a major factor when you're deciding what to do with a fire. So I have policies that will allow me to manage a fire if it's safe to do so. I have policies that will allow me to put it out as fast as possible if I have to. So there's a lot of discretion that goes into what to do with these fires. So with my fire background and my experience, Southwestern Oregon is not a place anytime soon where you're gonna manage fires early in a summer months and have it be reasonably safe. Okay, we're gonna take a quick commercial break. Stay with us. Welcome back to our Five on Five. We're getting here with Merv George, the forest supervisor for Rogue River Siskiyou National Forest. Uh, it's, it's early, it's, it's May, it's not fire season yet. Do you have any inkling one way or another whether this fire season will be better or worse than last year? You know, fire seasons are becoming a lot harder to predict. This year, for example, we're getting some moisture right now. So for me, every day that we get a day of rain in the typical fire season, that's one less day we're gonna see fire. The problem with getting so much moisture though is you get a lot of grasses and a lot of brush growing up. I don't know how many of you are keeping up on your lawns when you try to mow your lawns this time of the year, but it's the same kind of principle out there in the forests. So we're expecting a lot more brush this year. Uh, one of the things that the predictive services branch of the government, who's usually pretty accurate about predicting fire seasons, what I'm hearing is that Western Washington has sort of a bullseye on it this year. But when you look at all the risk assessments, southwestern Oregon, based on how much fuel we have, um, the places where our wildland urban interfaces, such as like Ashland, Merlin, and other areas like that, we're gonna have some risk for a while until we can get to a point where we're doing this ecological uh, restoration and reducing fuels. And so we're uh, actively doing that now, mm -hmm. trying to make a lot of these areas more fire safe. We're working closely with our partners. Um, so we're doing what we can you know, to try to reduce those risks. But I think that for the near future, the fire risks are real for Southwestern Oregon. I'm asking you a lot of specific questions. What misconceptions, if any, are there about either the local forest service, your, your office, or firefighters in general that you wanna let the public know about? You know, I hear a lot about um, the forest service having a let it burn policy. 
I can tell you that I do not have a policy in my office that mandates that every fire I get, I have to let it burn. I have a lot of policies that give me a lot of latitude based on the safety of firefighters, but also our communities. It would be irresponsible for me to let a fire burn early in a fire season when I know that that fire is not going to stay in the backcountry somewhere. Two summers in a row, we've learned that fires in the Calmeopsis come charging out at the end of the summer at a time when fire resources are really limited across the country because other places in the country catch on fire at the same time. And then it becomes this competition because we run out of fire resources. Mm -hmm. That is a misconception that we have plenty of aircraft, plenty of firefighters and hotshot crews and bulldozers. When you get to planning level five, which means it's the entire country's on fire, we run out of firefighters and equipment. And in fact, last year, we had to bring in the National Guards from Australia and New Zealand to come help us mm -hmm. because we simply were running out of firefighters. Yeah, I remember one of those Aussies we interviewed. Yeah, interesting. Right. Okay. So, so other misconceptions are that firefighters like to let fires get bigger so they can make more money. You know, the, the risks on wildland fires are so great, most people are just trying to get home at the end of their shifts and get home safely. You know, I have never met a firefighter who has ever been in a conversation where they're trying to let fires get bigger and transfer risk to the community as a result of their quest to make more money. If I ever run into a firefighter that uh, has that sort of attitude, they will not be working for me. Interesting. All right. Well, I, I do want to get one more in quick. We're, we're over time right now. Um, teamwork. You guys obviously work with BL, BLM. You guys are o, ODF. There's a lot of that. Uh, how do you guys make that work seamlessly? Because obviously lives are on the line. Regardless of what jersey we wear, when it comes to keeping you know, the residents of southwestern Oregon safe, we work together. Last year, I can't tell you enough how much I thank the cooperation of ODF, Coos FPA, Douglas FPA, uh, Oregon State Fire Marshal's office, because when homes are threatened, they're the ones who come in to help protect those homes. We had thousands of contractors come in that we all work together to keep people safe. And I'll tell you, uh, it, it, I'm really humbled to be around those kinds of folks. They're truly heroes. Well, I appreciate you sticking around. Four parts, two days. Thank you very much. Good yes. to see you. A lot of questions, and we'll all hope uh, cross our fingers for a good summer. Thank you. All right. Stay with us. We'll be right back.